Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Congregation may be seated. <clears throat> Dear friends in Christ Jesus, this morning we're going to be looking at the gospel lesson which you had just previously heard read. But in all cases, our gospel lessons are so rich and so full of things that, that uh, we need to hear and we need to see that really I'm going to just concentrate on one small thing. And, of course, this particular one is going to be about the fact that they recognized Jesus and his disciples, and they came and they ran and they gathered. In fact, they recognized him so well that they gathered, and it said that there was close to 5,000 men. We're not talking about the women and the children were there, but if you just figure an average-sized family, even of today's, they're probably looking at somewhere around the fact that maybe even as many as 20,000 people. Many times the, what, what the world would have us look at when we see the type of crowds that Jesus would, would, would draw. In fact, I know some of these mini-series about Jesus and all that that's out there kind of shows a handful of people that are around. But yet this is a, an area in which, <clears throat> which covered an entire plain. There were probably you know, quite a few people that were there. But yet it's in this that they recognized Jesus and they came. In fact, it wasn't just simply a thing that they, they, they left their houses and kind of wandered out into the street to see him. No, they followed him. They saw his boat that was out in the water, and they followed him. They tried to anticipate where he was going so that they could be where he was, where he was going to be. That's how excited that they were. That's how much they wanted to see Jesus. That's how much they wanted to be with him. But really the key part of this is, is that they recognized who he was. Let me ask you a question today. Do you recognize Jesus? Do you recognize him when you see him? When you come face to face with Jesus, do you know who he is? You know, if we really look in the world today, that is a question that we really need to be asking. Because we can just tell by the way and the trends of the things that are happening today that there are a lot of people that don't recognize who Jesus is. You know, when, uh, when you go to places like New York, or maybe when you travel abroad, I know when we were in Italy last year, we saw this everywhere, especially down in Venice. There were always people trying to put these purses up in, up in their thing. They were trying to sell us these things that were imitation. They, they said, well, these are coach purses. And when you looked at them, you really couldn't tell the difference from afar. But yet when you started to really take a really close look at it, they were imitations. In fact, it's a thing when we look at, <clears throat> when we hear some of these co uh, commercials that are on TV, don't buy any of the imitations, buy the original one. Well, the thing about it is, is that we live in a world today where there are a lot of Jesuses out there. There are a whole lot of Jesuses. There are a lot of copies. There are a lot of imitations that are out there. So in light of that, again, I ask you, do you recognize Jesus when you see him? Because really what we have to do is we have to understand what it is we see. How do we recognize Jesus? What is it that we look for in him? Well, what we have to do is we have to look at what is who Jesus truly is? Because like I said, there's a lot of different Jesuses out there, and they'll try to sell you on, on, the, on the things that it is. But when you look at it, it really comes down to what we have to do is look at the attributes of who Jesus is. We've got to look at who he is. What are the attributes of Jesus? Well, you know, as we kind of look at it, you know, I, it, it, it makes me think of a time when I was in high school and we had a, a teacher that would come in and we were learning chemistry at the time. And I remember one day when we came into class, there were three beakers that were up on the teacher's desk. And one of the beakers was just simple, plain tap water. And the other was a, a chemical compound, and I don't remember what the name of it was, but it was one of those things that was safe to drink. If you drank it, what would happen is all of a sudden you'd get this real bitter, sour taste in your mouth. 
But yet in the other beaker, there was acid. Acid strong enough to even eat through the lining of your stomach if you drank it. And I remember that as we went in there and we started the class, he says, now I have these three things and this is what's in these. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. Now, who's going to take a volunteer? Who wants to be a volunteer to drink these, these beakers? How many people do you think volunteered? You see, the thing about it is, is that when you looked at it, there was nothing that, that would distinguish. They were all clear liquids that they were there. It wasn't the acid was not one of those things that was boiling over and steaming and all that like you see in the movies. It was just simply a clear beaker of a clear liquid that looked like water. And if you looked at any of them, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. <clears throat> Well, the teacher obviously knew, so he picked up the, the first one and he drank the first one with no problem. He knew what the water was. And then he took the other one, the one that contained the acid, and he poured it over. I don't even remember what the substance was, and that's when you started seeing the bubbling and the steaming and all of that kind of thing. And within seconds, this little piece of thing that he had in the, in the dish was gone. You see, we have to really think of it this way, and that's the problem with so many Jesuses out there. We have to know which one is the right one. Because if we choose the wrong one, if we follow the wrong one, what's going to happen? The same thing that happened to that piece of whatever it was that was in that dish. Only for us as flesh, it means death. Eternal death. But like I said, there are a lot of pictures of Jesuses out there. There's a lot of things that people would say. And so that's where we have to look back to the attributes. First of all, what we have to do is when we look at Jesus, first of all, we have to know that He is the life. He is the truth. And it's only in Him that we find the truth. That we have to look to Him and it's through the Holy Spirit that what He does is He opens us our eyes up to the truth. And the truth being those things that are written about him in the scriptures. Who he is and what his personality is like. The very first thing that we have to do is we have to look at, at, at what his desire for all people are. And I'm going to say something here that might make some people feel a little bit uncomfortable. I'm going to say something here that there's going to be a lot of churches out there that are going to disagree with me. But yet it is one of the things that the, the, that the, uh, the fake Jesuses are all sold on. And it's this. That Jesus accepts everybody. It doesn't matter who you are or what you're like. He accepts everybody. That kind of sounds harsh, doesn't it? But that's not the truth. The truth is, is that God loves everybody, that Jesus loves everybody. And the difference between it is, is that it's not one of those things that the world would have you believe. That what he does is it doesn't matter who you are or what you do in your life that he accepts you. God, now, Jesus never accepted anybody for who they were. But what he did was he loved them and gave them the words that would bring exactly what those people that were on the shores were looking for. And that was healing. If you look at every single situation in which Jesus comes to somebody, he loves them so much that he gives them the words that will not keep them the way that they are, but that will change their life, that will transform their lives. The woman at the well, he didn't say, keep on living with this guy that you're living with, keep on living with different husbands, keep on doing those things. He says, no, let me give you the words. Let me give you the words, the living words, the, the words, the water of life. And it was in hearing those words that he told her once again, he says, go and sin no more. 
That's those words that people desired, that they wanted to hear, those 5,000 plus that were all around the shores that were looking for Jesus. They recognized in Jesus there was true healing in Him, both physical and spiritual. You see, because that's what Jesus did in His ministry. That's what His miracles were all about. Was He looked at people and He had compassion upon them. He looked at the people and He says, I want to change what's going on here. It's not right that a man should not see. It's not right that a woman should not be able to walk. It's not right that sickness should riddle the body of people. And it's in those He spoke the words of true hope and life. He says, look to Me, for I am the resurrection and the life. And so it's not this idea of we're just going to accept that Jesus just simply accepts people for who they are. But what He does is He looks at who they are and He loves them and He gives them the words of eternal life. He gives them the words of salvation. He gives them the words of repentance. He gives them the words of the kingdom. And see, that's the other way. Is that when people speak about Jesus, it's always got to point to the cross and the open tomb. Because that is the place in which He bestows His grace and His hope upon us. And that is the only place that we can find grace and hope. For if Jesus did not hang on that cross, and if Jesus did not walk out of that tomb, then we are hopeless. We have nothing to hope for. And that's what we have to look at. That's how we recognize Jesus. We recognize Him and the things that He's done. We recognize Him for the fact that He is holy. And He does not like sin. He hates sin. Just as the Father hates sin and is a just God, and so is Jesus. You see, Jesus doesn't accept sin. But that's what the Jesuses of the world are about, isn't it? Oh, just simply, it doesn't matter who you are. Jesus will accept you. It doesn't matter what you do. Jesus will accept you. That's not what he says. He says this. He says, I don't care what you've done. Come to me and hear my words. I don't care what your past is about. Come to me and let me give you the words, the living words. I don't care what any of this is about. I don't care what you look like or that. But come here, listen to me. He says to us, believe in me and repent. That's what the true Jesus says. In fact, he looks upon the crowd. He looks upon these 5,000 plus that are there and he says, these people are hungry. Give them food. You see, that's the thing about it is, is that when we repent of our sins and we seek Jesus and we believe in Jesus and who he is, that he bestows upon us all that we need. Where else do we see Jesus? How else do we know him? We know Him in the very supper that we're about to receive here in a few minutes. And if we understand what the grace that comes from that is, it's all, once again, this whole idea of healing. That He heals us of our sins by giving us the forgiveness through His body and blood. That healing that comes from that. That's what Jesus is about. That's how we know who He is. And the way that the world knows this is through us. As I said last week, and the week before, and I don't know how many times I've said it, that what the Scriptures tell us about us is, is that we are? Children of God. No, we're not. We're redeemed. redeemed children of God. I just talked about forgiveness and salvation. That's what the cross is all about. One of these days I'll get you guys right, right? Actually, it's not me. It's Jesus Christ. Because it is exactly that. It is that we're redeemed children of God because Christ went to the cross and He died to take away those sins, not to leave us here in the condition that we're at, not to leave us in our sin, not to leave us there, 
but to take us away from that, to bring us healing, to make us right, to make us like Him. It's a lot of work, especially for some of you guys. But yet Jesus takes on the task and through the Holy Spirit, He continually works that works of right, righteousness and salvation in us through His death and His resurrection, through the forgiveness of sins, and that's what gives us our hope. You see, the other Jesuses out there give us an earthly hope. But you just believe hard enough, you just pray hard enough, you're going to get everything you want and things are just going to go hunky-dory. Life's going to be a bowl of cherries. I'm here to tell you that's not the way that it works. And you know that. I know Deb knows that. How difficult it is not only to have to put to rest one, one parent, but within hours of the other one having to do it again. That's not the way that it should be. And I can guarantee you that Jesus in His compassion and His love had tears in His eyes for us. He had compassion upon her. So he had compassion upon Deb. And He had compassion upon Larry. He said, this is not the way that it needs to be. And so that's why I give Him my word to repent and believe the Gospel. Repent and believe in me because in me you're going to find life and salvation and comfort. Believe in me because the reality is is that you will see those people again. And there will be a day in which all of heaven and all of us will rejoice and be, be crowded around and we'll see Him because we'll be there together and Jesus will be there with us. And we'll see Him face to face. That's the joy that we have. The life isn't a bowl of cherries. Hardship comes our way. Our bodies break. Our eyesight fails. Loved ones die. And yes, even for each one of us here, there will be a day in which each of us will face that. But the real Jesus, the true Jesus, the non imposter Jesus, the original looks to us and has compassion and says to me, you are my redeemed child. I love you so much that I speak these words to you and I bring healing, the healing balm of salvation. Just simply believe in me. Trust in me. Don't follow those Jesuses of the world. Sure, they, they proclaim a good message. They, they proclaim a message that, that might be nice and fluffy and full of, of, of unicorns and rainbows. But listen to the truth. You see, sometimes true love means that you speak the truth. And Jesus says that, I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. Just trust in me. Trust in me like, like those 5,000 in the plane that I fed. Trust in me like those thousands that were on the Mount of Beatitudes, on the Sermon on the Mount. Trust in me like all those saints who have gone before me. Trust in me like King David. Trust in me like Moses. Trust in me. Because when all those other Jesuses fail you, here is where the truth meets. And the true Jesus says to this, I love you. I love each and every one of you. I should love you so much that I know more about you than you know you. I know what your weaknesses are. I know when you stumble. I know what your, your, your strengths are. I know where your needs are. But come to me and put your burden upon me. And take mine. Take my yoke. Because it's light. Believe in me. Trust in me. Your sins are forgiven. You have life. So go and sin no more. Oh, and by the way, if you do, 
My grace is sufficient for you. My grace will lift you up. My grace will be there for you. And that there will be a day in which He will raise His arms up and He'll gather us and He'll hold us by the arms and He'll say, Welcome home, good and faithful servant. That's the message of the true Jesus. The attribute of love that doesn't want to keep us in sin, but wants us to transcend above it. That doesn't want us to trust in false idols, but wants us to, to trust in what's true in its eternal life. Doesn't want us to trust in earthly things, but gives us all the glory. That's what it means to be a redeemed child of God. That's what it means. This is why I ask again. Do you recognize Jesus? And if you do, go running for him, just like those crowds. You need to tell more people if they did, this place would be full. But he loves them. And so he's sending you to tell them about it. So go and tell them. Tell them in Jesus' name. That's what next week is all about. Tell those little children about Jesus Christ. Tell them to come and see the real Jesus because He's going to be here and He's going to tell them about His love and He's going to tell them about His grace and He's going to tell them about His mercy. And He's going to heal them in the same way He does us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds centered and focused on Christ Jesus, our true Savior. Amen. We take our tithes and our offerings and we lay them before the Lord.